Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. It's a beautiful day here in Waikiki. This weekend we had a really beautiful event here. It's the Keiki event, the Groms as we like to call them, the Young Surfers event. So we had a great weekend here with all the ohana coming down and supporting their, their children as they paddled out. They're so cute. Some of them are pretty gnarly surfers too. Uh, today we have with us a real true-to-life cowboy. I guess everyone in Texas is a cowboy, Dr. Craig Terzinski. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, his life on the range and his life on the ranch. And he's also the director of the BOMA USA on uh, natural family planning. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, I'm writing this book called uh, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? And it's been really, it's been really an interesting uh, journey for me to write this. It's actually easy, the easiest book I've ever written, uh, and it's on the it's on the twenty four rules for manliness. And one of the rules is on on men need to be dangerous. Uh, uh, it, people kind of squirm when you say that, but a man needs to be dangerous. A man needs to be willing to stand, know what he stands for, and stand up for it, and be willing to fight for what he believes in. And we, you know, the, the thing is, is people go, oh, you have to meet, be meek and mild. Well, Jesus, you know, I recall him using a whip uh, when he went into the money changers and cleaned house. And uh, it was said of him that it, he said these sorts of things like, if you're not for me, you're against me. You know, so he kind of drew the battle lines. And even at, at the very beginning of his ministry, he went out into the, into the desert and took on the biggest bully on the block. And for 40 days, fought him and fought him off uh, using, using scripture. And, of course, the biggest UFC fight of all time, the ultimate fight, took place on Golgotha when Jesus went to the cross and he, and he, he battled. Think about all the, every, every demon in the world uh, coming down on him. It was so, so, uh, such a heavy spiritual attack that it grew dark that, that, that afternoon. And he, uh, he did something as a ninja black belt. Uh, there's something that we're trained in. It's a combative way. It's not really an art. Um, uh, to stage the fight, we've learned we learn to uh, not just to to react to an opponent, but we learn to to give that opponent certain openings. I personally really like to fight uh, in uh, a knife fighting. I, I love it when my opponent. I like to fight empty-handed when my opponent has a knife. Of course, we're just training with with training knives. But it, when when you have a someone has a knife, you pretty much know what they're going to use to attack you. It's not going to be a right uh, a right. Uh, 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 punch or a or a or uppercut or a kick uh or not going to grab you they're going to use that knife so you already have the advantage on them because you know where the f attack's coming from and you also uh learn to stage the fight in other words fighting someone with a knife i may open up uh the right side of my my neck to them i may block everywhere but that area so i'm kind of tempting him uh to to go for that to go for it to go for me where I open up up to his attack. So I kind of know what is, where the attack's coming from and where it's going to go so I can react, and, and it's called staging the fight. Well, Jesus did that on the cross. You know, oh, by the way, the funniest thing with a knife fight is having that person attack and then using his own weapon to kill him, to destroy him. You know, you're doing a wrist throw while you hold the knife and, and the attack is over. Well, uh, it's the same thing with Jesus on Golgotha. On Golgotha, Jesus staged that fight. And Satan's weapon was death. And uh, Jesus, uh, uh, there's a scripture for us to say that says, dying you destroyed death, rising you restored life, we, we say uh, in the Mass. And then there's a scripture verse that says, he took captivity, capture. And that's what Jesus did. He defeated Satan using his own weapon. He staged that fight. And we're in, we're in, a, we're in a fight here in, in our civilization today, speaking of the the culture of death that uh, John Paul II uh, spoke about. And so we have a warrior here with us today who's part of that fight of, of the dignity of, of human life and helping, uh, helping people who really would love to have a child uh, to have a child, but doing it in, in a godly way. So we have uh, one of our, our great cowboy guests of all time, Dr. Craig Terzinski, uh, 
physiologist uh, with a Boma with Boma USA. Aloha, Craig. Welcome to the show. Hello. <laughs> so great why to, great why to be like here. so you're in <laughs> Dallas, Texas. You're raised in Iowa, but you're a ran you, I call you a rancher. If you have more than eight acres, you're a rancher. So <laughs> so you got, you were raised yeah. on a on a farm or a ranch, and you and you live on one now with your family near yes. Dallas. Yes. Yes, it, it, uh, but actually, Bear, I, I was born in Chicago, and it wasn't until I was 12 years old that my dad decided to sell his businesses and move us to a farm in Iowa, and I, I, I loved it. I was, absolutely loved it. And, so was anything uh, like? And so I couldn't, I, I couldn't ever, you know, once I was on my own, I, I couldn't ever live in the city. I had, so, to, I had to be out in, out in the country. Someplace. So it's kind of like Green Acres, that old TV show. You just pulled yeah. up the t t family. Well, exactly. uh, okay. Yeah. So then, so it reminds me of Father Mitch Pacwa, right? You know, he says I was born in Chicago, but I got to Texas just as fast as I could. <laughs> you know, like I just yes. envisioned him in his cowboy boots and a diaper heading down to Texas. But uh, so yeah, my wife was a barrel racer. She was a rodeo girl, and she wore she only wore cowboy oh, wow. boots until I think when she had to go out for cheerleader, she had to get regular tennis shoes or something. So what was it like? Uh, you know, living on the what animals did you did you have in Iowa? Yeah. In Iowa, we had, um, you know, coming from Chicago, we weren't, we weren't farmers, right? We had, we had to kind of learn, uh, learn to be farmers. But so we had a little bit of everything. We had a few milk cows. We had a couple sheep. We had some pigs. We had chickens. We had laying hens and, you know, uh, meat birds, um, and cattle. Of course, did you, cattle did you name any? Of, did you name any of the ones you were going to eat later? Uh, no, but on, on our own farm, as our kids were growing up, we did name our cattle, but we named them T-Bone or Sirloin. Or... <laughs> so your ranch in Texas? Uh, well, I I think I'm more of a farmer still. But, okay, well, what do you um, call what do you call call it? Do you, is there a name for it? Um, I yeah, I'm a farmer. Do you, I, but I don't, consider don't, myself a farmer. But yeah. don't you don't do you brand your cattle or no? No, we're, we're, we're a small operation. Uh, we'll, um, you know, we'll put tags in their ears, but that's, yeah, it, that's, that's what people we don't do. need to brand them. Well, I, <laughs> when I was a, a, a CPA working for the Deloitte Touche in El Paso, Texas, we audited this huge, I mean, huge, unbelievably huge cattle ranch in Mexico. And uh, they said when they branded the cattle to identify them, that that was a cruel basis of accounting. That's our only accounting jokes. Get it? A cruel accounting? Yeah. Never mind. Okay. All right. But but so what what adventures did you have on the on the farm with your kids? Um, well, Tell yeah, me the that, worst thing that happened. Well, <laughs> it, this this is a memorable one for us. So um, our first cattle that we had were actually Brahmin, um, mm. and uh, one morning we were waiting for calves to be born. One morning, we got up. And we had a pool in the backyard. We got up and we saw a calf standing on the steps of the pool, shivering. And so we, uh, you know, we went and grabbed the calf. We we uh, dried it off, took it out to the mother. The mother rejected her. Mm. So we ended up having to bottle, or it was it was actually a he. We actually had to bottle feed him, but then we had to figure out what we were going to name him. So the so the kids decided we were going to call him Moses because we drew him out of the water. Oh my goodness, what a what, <laughs> you guys such a biblical family! But you did actually go to the point where you started calling them different, like T Bone and stuff like that. Yes, those, those are great yes. names. Well, so they so they knew right from the beginning that these weren't pets; these are animals that are here for a reason, and they're going to provide meat. I remember when I was a kid, my 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 grandmother. Uh, each of you guys can pick up the chicken you want. I picked out a rooster, and then one day I realized I was eating it. You know, like what? How? You know, it was like I saw a grab it, take it by its neck, and and that became our lunch. You know, so yeah, not yeah. A, not a good idea to name to name your your cattle or your or your animals. But you know, it's interesting when you're on the farm. People who work on farm and ranch. They they learn early, uh, you know, about the facts of life. And I should let people know that we're going to be talking about that sort of thing. Uh, today uh, uh, and and you eventually became involved in helping people that wanted to have children but were having yes. struggles with it and so yes. so we're gonna uh, just give us a little bit more about your background you were raised Catholic yes I cradle Catholic went to, went to church every Sunday um, 
And, you know, I moved into the assisted reproductive technology field, not, not by intention at the beginning. I actually went to do my graduate degree in reproductive physiology and did all my research on zoo animals. In fact, my, my dissertation was on elephants. Wow. And, and, <laughs> and so, but, but if you, by that point, I was already married and had one child. And uh, I started thinking about paying the bills. Right. And, and there, was, there was an avenue I could go, which was into assisted reproductive technology that paid very well. Um, and I really thought, even though the church, I, I knew the church teaching, I really thought maybe they were, they didn't really understand. And I was helping, I was pursuing the, the, a career to help people. But you were doing an in vitro fertilization, and we're going to talk about uh, how you yes. came to a point of conviction. And I'm just, I'm yes. just picturing, you know, I've seen what I, I've seen the whole thing about how you uh, fertilize a, a, a cow. It's not yeah. a pretty sight. And yeah. I would, I would, I would have thought, you know, I would like, I just envisioning you with an elephant doing this. <laughs> we're talking with yeah. Dr. Craig Terzinski. Um, he's a physiologist with the with Boma USA, and he's a he's a uh, an expert in the Billings ovulation method of natural family planning, and we're going to get we're going to get back and talk about that because so many people want to have children, they're struggling with it, or maybe they want to have a more they want to have a natural way of of of, uh, of of you know having children when they more more when they're ready for that. So we're going to talk more about the fa- Catholic faith teaching on that, and about what uh, what what Craig does for for. Uh, for his his clients and training other doctors. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Daniel the Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up. Grit. Grit. That is true grit. It's one of my favorite terms. It's a word I use a fair amount in my forthcoming post-Civil War Western novel, Revenge and Redemption. Whether you got calluses or not, doesn't determine a man or a woman of true grit. You can be a preacher or an office manager and have true grit. True grit comes from, well, gritting your teeth in tough conditions and then keeping your gear in action. A man or a woman with true grit just doesn't have quit. Doesn't mean there's no fear involved, nor the shaking of hands or knees. I've had to grit things out in terrifying conditions. No doubt, so have you. Jesus walked willingly to the cross of crucifixion, all the while sweating drops of blood and fighting depression. But he got her done. That's what counts. Dr. Luke in his gospel wrote that Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Jesus was determined to realize his destiny through the cross. Dang, that sure is true grit. The Apostle Paul had one tough haul in bringing the gospel to the Roman Empire, writing, We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. He had that keeping on, keeping on deal. Man or woman's got to know what's worth standing for and then standing for it no matter what the opposition, mistakes, setbacks, or number of battles lost during the war. It ain't over till it's over, partner. You'll be known less of a man or woman when needing true grit if you call out to the Lord for his courage and his faith and his power. Jesus did. Paul did. I do. Shoot, I do it nearly every day. True grit. Get it? Got it? Good. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Now you can journey with other men in the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue and servant leadership through Bears Man Cave non-Facebook community and our three-year school of manliness. Video, audio, and written content, as well as self-assessments help you to chart your new course. Join us at deepadventure.com. is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. 
You've been warned. Now, here is Fair Wasnick. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. My co-adventure guide today is Dr. Craig Terzinski with, the, with BOMA USA. Can you tell us what BOMA USA is? So BOMA USA stands for the Billings Ovulation Method Association. And we're an affiliate of, of the Billings Organization, the main worldwide Billings ov Ovulation Method Organization in Australia. Okay. So we're 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 uh, essentially uh, tasked with the training in the United States. Okay. So now, so talk, talk story with us now. So you begin your career. Tell us about that, how that progressed, and when you came to that point of realization that you you couldn't continue to do that. But give us the reasons yeah. for that. Yeah. So uh, so obviously, I was I was trained in reproductive physiology in all species, and we did in both the zoo animal and the. Uh, uh, in the agriculture industry, we do a lot of embryo transfer and artificial insemination and all those things, uh, you know, freezing semen and things like that. So I had all those skills. Um, I moved then to uh, do a postdoctoral fellowship where I would then transfer those skills to uh, human assisted reproductive technology. And then I did that for two years and then got my first faculty position um, at LSU Medical Center in Shreveport, Louisiana, where I directed the assisted reproductive technology lab, uh, include all the IVF work that we did in what vitro is that? fertilization. What? Okay, yes, go ahead. In vitro fertilization, uh, all the uh, male testing, you know, the, 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 the work with semen to identify men who had infertility. And then we did all the hormone assay work as well for couples who came in who were struggling with fertility. Um, and, and it seems like a noble cause. I mean, it is a noble cause, um, but the ends doesn't justify the means. I, I, but I correct. kind of stepped on you as you were, go ahead and continue to, to share. No, and that's, that's exactly right. That's why I pursued it. I thought what I was doing was helping couples to achieve a pregnancy. And over that about a seven year period of time, Slowly but surely, I started to see what I call the disorder. And I've come to now understand that that disorder was because we were pursuing this approach that was against natural law. And whenever you go against natural law, you produce disorder, meaning you're creating problems as you're trying to solve them. Ah, and um, It's a great way to say it. When you go against the natural order, you're creating more problems than you're solving. Yes, and yes. What, and, and what type of problems did you see? Yes. Yeah, so um, obviously infertility can be very painful for the couples experiencing it. So they're, they're already injured in some way, in, in, in some respect, because they're struggling through that. IVF then becomes like a roller coaster ride. It's more of a, a sadistic roller coaster ride because each step in the procedure can either be a high or a low, depending on how um, how successful that step in the procedure is. Um, and so there's several steps, and as they go through that, there's high and low, high and low, and then ultimately there's um, whether or not they become pregnant. But even pregnancy itself is not just a yes or a no. They can become what, what we call first uh, uh, pregnant through a chemical pregnancy. So just, a, just the hormonal pregnancy is positive. But it's not, but then, it's not really a pre uh, they're, but they're not really pregnant, is that what you're saying? Well, they're pregnant, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it will result in a baby. Hmm. And so there's a lot of what we call chemical pregnancies that are lost. Okay. So, so it's a, it, it shows that in the embryo tried to implant, but it never, well, it never continued. Well, what you have there is you have a, you have a, a, a an embryo, you have Correct. a human being there. Correct. And so there was a pregnancy that just didn't, didn't uh, take. That's correct. Uh, and I think the saddest thing for me is I've known people that they're so excited about, we did in vitro and we're, we're and we're going to have a baby or maybe sometimes two, it seems like, but they don't ever talk about the, the because normally you, you fertilize many embryos and then freeze them. They never yes. talk about the babies that are frozen 
or throw or I don't know what they do with do with them when they're done with their what does happen to a frozen embryo that never becomes um, is never Im, 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 implanted yeah are those are those and used for research or what do they do with those they can be they can be that in some cases they are in some cases they're discarded that's they're, they're, actually they're one of the top they're five. discarded it's such a casual word yeah. yes. it's a living human being that's just discarded that's correct okay. that's correct in in um, that's actually one of the five major um, uh, evidences of the disordered approach that I've identified is the abandoned embryos. Um, and I actually now serve on the board of Sacred Heart Guardians and Shelter, which is an organization that um, uh, attempts to take these embryos, have these embryos that are that are deceased, that, that die, they're not, they're not still viable, they die in the lab and actually provide burial services for them. So Praise to give God. them the respect of a human being. Praise God. Um, but, but yes, uh, so most, uh, most couples, when they go through the procedure, they will have all of their eggs fertilized and it could be on average 10, but Bear, we had as many as 70 eggs from one IVF retrieval. You know, th this might be the most heartbreaking interview I've ever done. I mean, this is really devastating. And how does that affect them when they do? Do they ever come to the realization that they've abandoned or discarded? Uh, you know, I, have their baby. I and think they. they just, yeah. I, they 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 have various degrees of struggle with it, right? Some some come to recognize it. Um, some some don't. Um, some. Some believe, like the field, the, the medical field, they believe that the embryo is somewhere in between a person, a real human, and property. So they kind of treat it as something in between those two things. Um, so some never, never come to realize. In fact, many of them simply abandon them. So they have those embryos frozen. They go on with their life. Maybe they, uh, maybe they had children. Maybe they didn't. And in fact, ones that didn't have children, or didn't, uh, weren't able to have a child from the procedure, but have still have some embryos frozen. They would be more likely to just abandon those embryos. And then at that point, it's up to the laboratory to decide what to do with them. And now usually there's a consent form that's signed prior that if you don't hear from them over a period of time, the laboratory then can take. Um, take action to either discard them or to use them for research. You know, there's um, a woman may have an abortion or maybe two or three. You know, it's uh, you know, and I know they say when there's an abortion, there's two victims. It's the it's the woman and the child. The woman really yeah. suffers. But this is not one or two. This is like eight or more uh, that are that are killed basically. And so there's yeah, there's millions. How do how do there's, I mean there's per, millions per, per, in, per patient? In yeah. Well, how do yeah. what was there? Do and do you see any of these couples receiving counseling about this afterwards? As you see, or do they just walk away from that. So there are there are a few organizations that are trying to do something about it. One one of course is Sacred Heart Guardians, but that that is after the fact, after they've deceased. There's um, the adoption services that are available. Um, unfortunately, there, the church has not really ruled whether that is uh, morally uh, licit or not. Um, it's, it, it's not been ruled on, but, the, but it, the, most of the moral theologians have, have uh, been more on, the fa more on the side of it not being morally licit. Tell me so a, it, yeah. it leaves a dilemma that cannot be solved. Uh, there you go. And so tell me, when wh we have about a minute here before we take a break so we can continue after the break, but w at what point did you begin to realize this is something that you couldn't participate in? There was a, there was really a, 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 something that happened that pushed me over the edge, if you will. And that was when I was requested, the, the couple had requested after they had two embryos transferred to discard the remaining embryos. Not, not to freeze them. And I, I objected to that, um, had some conflict with the physician who directed the program, who was my boss. 
It went through the ethics committee of the hospital. They subsequently ruled that we had to do what the patients uh, desired. With their property, and with the property. With their property. Um, and, I, and I did it, Bear. I allowed those embryos to remain in culture. And if you don't continue to nurture them, they will die. And as uh, as in essence, what happened, they were they were they remained in culture past the point that we have the knowledge to to allow them to develop. So they eventually died. And um, that was the turning point. That was the point in which I realized that if I was going to be in this field, I was going to have to accept everything that came with it. We're talking with Dr. Craig Trzinski. He's uh, a director for the BOMA USA. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about this change that you had uh, to go to more of the natural family planning approach. Uh, and we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wasink Adventure. Listen, be, listen, tune back in because you, this may not affect you personally, but someone you know, this might be a, a, an answer for them. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wasnick Adventure. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in the islands, Waikiki Beach. You know, in the islands we have this tree called a banyan tree. I don't know if you've ever seen one, but a banyan tree sets down its roots and it goes deep. And then the branches spread out and the birds, especially the minor birds, come and live in the branches. And then as the branches go out, these tendrils start coming down and these tendrils actually will start to touch the ground and those tendrils will go into the ground and they become roots and they become almost like another tree. If the trunks of the branches of these roots can be, can be you know, bigger than I can reach my arms around. And then the branches go out further and then another tendril of roots come down and after decades and decades and decades, a banyan tree can cover uh, a whole city block, one tree. My, one of my favorite places to go was the Moana here. It's where I've written a couple of my books, sitting there under the banyan tree, enjoying its shade. Well, you're supposed to be like a banyan tree. You're supposed to be like a banyan tree that lets its roots go deep. And when you let your roots go deep, I mean, live the sacramental life of a Catholic. Believe and practice the teachings of the magisterium of the church. Don't be a cafeteria Catholic. If you're a cafeteria Catholic, I would say you're really not a Catholic at all. A Catholic is one who totally believes uh, in the teachings of the Catholic Church. And as you go deep, your branches will go out wide and you'll be a place where people like to come and find shelter and be in your shade and find a sense of well-being and goodness. And then let your roots go down again and go out deeper. The more you give to the Lord, the greater He will expand your range of ministry. Let your roots go deep, let your branches go wide. This is Bear Wozniak from DeepAdventure.com. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak, deepadventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I need to invite uh, the men to uh, go to deepadventure.com, the women too. The women can uh, join the mama bears or the men can uh, join uh, Bears School of Manliness. Uh, when you join either, excuse me, either of those organizations, you get access to all of our radio shows, the YouTube version of it. You get access to uh, our 
Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak Motorcycle TV show. You get all three seasons that are up now on, on EWTN, plus every new episode that we do, we, we send it to you actually months and months before EW10 even airs it. So also, there's a one-year curriculum for women on the virtues, and for the men, we have a three-year curriculum. For the men, we go a step further. You're also part of the man cave, which means you're, it's, a not all, we have, it's like a non-Facebook community, and we communicate with each other, encourage each other, challenge each other, and, uh, and then you're, part, you're made part of a small group. So once a month, you, you meet up with your small group to go over the curriculum, and then once a month, you, we all meet together in a Zoom room. And uh, the curriculum is laid out. So once a month, if you join in the middle of the year, you just join us right where we are. This month, for example, we're talking about the virtue of love. And so, uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the man cave, the School of Manliness is so cool. We've got uh, video. We've got audio. We've got written, uh, written things on each, of these, on each of these subjects. And so a lot of men are choosing to join and then have their... Their sons, like confirmation age or older, join uh, with them. They, the, the younger men can't join the man cave. They can't be in, the, in our meetings. But the fathers provide that leadership for them, and they, and they get their own sign-in and log-in, and they, they get to go through the curriculum. And uh, the fathers and sons get to go through, and he can tutor them, mentor them uh, uh, about uh, growing in manliness. So go to deepadventure.com, and there's so many other things there you won't believe. But go there and check it out. We're, this is Bear Wozniak. Uh, our our co-adventure guide today is Craig Turzinski. He's a, a physiologist, uh, Dr. Craig Turzinski with uh, Bowman USA. So you came to this moment when you realized you, there isn't, you can't straddle the fence anymore. Yes. Yes, and at that point, um, you know, the first thing I had to do, I, I had a family, uh, um, was, find, was find work. So... Um, Fortunately, had a had a uh, friend who was a neighbor that worked for a medical device company, and he knew my struggles, and he offered me a position in in the orthopedic medical device industry, and I actually became a salesperson. You which um, just not you, <laughs> you know. It, <laughs> although I suppose you were good at it, but I mean, it's just not what your where your heart was. Well, it, it wasn't where my heart was, but um, it, it certainly it was it was very rewarding. In many ways, I, I actually have an orthopedic a problem that I was born with bilateral club feet. So I, I identified very much with orthopedics and and um, and it was a wonderful gift that God gave me uh, because I was able to make that transition financially and at least not uh, n- not affect us. It was a bridge. Way. It was a bridge. God had something in mind for you. He did. He did. Um, and. So I, I essentially did that for 20 years. Wow. I did that for 20 years, and and um, about halfway through it, I was really missing the science, and I and, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to check out this natural family planning training from the Creighton model. I went and and did did the first educational program and started teaching, and then got a promotion at work and kind of got busy and put it off. Um, went another 10 years and then uh, said, I really need to go back and get my training. And I, I want to teach, and mostly I want to teach health professionals. And I found BOMA and did the training through them. I love the science. I love the science is based on work that was done 50 years ago, but it's it's still solid today. Still, still same human beings. Yes, and Absolutely. S- so yeah. tell us what this is. If there's people here right now that are kind of on pins and needles saying we really need to do it. We want to have a child. Um, and then there's some that say we, we're not ready yet. We want to use the natural family planning in other ways. But tell us how to get pregnant. Okay. Let's All right. So, <laughs> so, so really, natural family planning essentially is following the woman's natural signs to determine when she's fertile and when she's unfertile. And then that way they can either decide to have children or not to have children. And so if they follow the rules, they can, uh, they could be 99% effective in avoiding pregnancy, but they can be up to 70 to 80% successful in achieving pregnancy. If there's not other issues, perhaps going health issues going on. Do you, do you take, do you talk to them about those other health issues too? Absolutely. So what what I found when I came back, (laughs) 
of health professionals who take the approach of what we call restorative reproductive medicine. So it's, in essence, it's looking at what the underlying cause is of the infertility, treating that, and then fertility returns. And it partners with natural family planning because the woman's chart is a diagnostic tool for oh. both diagnosing as well as seeing whether the treatment is effective. So it's it's a very powerful tool. It, you know, think of it as a movie, right? You could take a snapshot, which is a blood test, right? But if you have the chart, it's more like a movie. You're seeing every day what's happening step by step. So it's a very powerful diagnosis. So natural family planning uh, is uh, you're always open to life, which is the big distinction. Uh, and we didn't even talk about the damage that hormonal type uh, the pill does to right. women. It's it's the only thing that's you know the pill and abortion are are so against the Hippoc the Hippocratic oath or whatever it's called you know because it does damage. It's the only medicine that's really designed to do that. But so yeah. tell me now what I what tell us more about um, the Billings method. So Billings method was uh, was established by John and Evelyn Billings, two physicians in Australia. Um, when their uh, when their local parish approached them to say, you know, this was back in the 50s. We have all these couples and they're trying to use the rhythm method and it's just not working, John. We need something that works better. Can you help us? And so he agreed to help them for a few months and then he ended up doing this for over 50 years. He partnered with his wife as well, who was very important to have that woman's input into this <laughs> but then uh, then a couple very noted scientists an endocrinologist professor uh james brown who did very uh, basically hundreds of thousands of hormone assays and then professor odeblad who did very uh very detailed studies of the cervix so they could describe how the hormones change this uh, the secretions from the cervix and it's and it's all documented and um, and and so this method, when you when you follow the rules, um, will will essentially allow you to see what the uh, you know when you're fertile, when you're not, and when you're having issues. Because if you're not cycling normally, there has to be a reason for it. Now, some of those reasons could be well, you you just had a baby, or you're nursing. Or, um, or maybe you're approaching uh, perimenopause. So there's reasons for that. But if there's no reasons for it, then it usually is due to a health issue. And at that point, then there's a number of blood tests that can be done to start to identify what those issues are, whether it be thyroid or adrenal, um, could, be, um, could be metabolic. Uh, we all know about, we've all heard about the epidemic of diabetes. Well, before diabetes, there's metabolic issues that occur that are maybe subclinical, right? You can't really identify them, but it could affect your reproductive cycle and it does affect the reproductive cycle. It affects men's fertility as well. So when infertility is happening, identifying those underlying causes is what is what can benefit the couple. how many times a month do you get to see a big old smile when people find out that they that they have a first of all they find out there's an answer and then the answer to the prayer does come yeah it's um obviously i haven't been doing it that long now it's only been uh, about two or three years that i've come back to billings method but um and and, and discovered all these this community that's out there but the, the, the published literature and the stories that I hear from the physicians who I, who I partner with, um, it, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, couples who have been struggling and for years and maybe have gone even th through several attempts at in vitro fertilization and have failed. And some are even in their late 30s to early 40s, so they're getting towards the end of their reproductive life. But this, this approach is very effective, especially effective the, the older or the more ill that the person might be. 
We'll talk about that when we come back. We're talking with Dr. Craig Trzinski. I forgot to ask you your, your website. What is the website they can find you? So uh, the organization for BOMA is uh, boma-usa.org. And if you're, if, you, if you're an individual who wants to, needs help with, with this, or if you're a physician or, or a, you know, a nurse or someone wants to be trained in this, this is what Dr. Craig does. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure possible. We invite our mama bears to join our non-Facebook community created just for you, to share the journey with each other and to take the self-guided one-year course on the Virtues Plus. You have free access to all of the Long Ride Home TV show, all of the Bear Wozniak video version of our radio show, plus the Catechism in a Year videos, all at deepadventure.com. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to let everybody know, hey, Sophia Institute is hot off the press. Uh, they've published two of my books in the last six months. The first one is called Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, which always, my books always have good stories and a good narrative, but also just solid uh, Catholic teaching, and that one's on the seven virtues. And then the one that just came out is called A Surfer's Guide to the Soul. I get to go to OSV and do an LSV talk on it, and it's just a, it's a, it's a memoir really, but it's I use it as a means of kind of teaching Carmelite spirituality using surfing as a metaphor in my life as a metaphor for that. So you can go to Amazon, you can go to uh, Sophia Institute, or you go to our website deepadventure.com and go to our store, and we can get that for you. We're talking with Dr. Craig Terzinski. Now I've got a, uh, he's a, he's a physiologist uh, from boma-usa.com org org, org. okay. Uh, so here's the thing that's happened lately. Women have been give, told, spoken to, they've been lied to. The most important thing in life for you is to get to college, get a good education, get a career, and the career's gonna, you know, you're gonna have career success and you're gonna be happy. But women find as they go into their 30s and, and, and now in mid 30s that, you know, this isn't fulfilling for me. I'm, I'm working in a man's world for the most part because businesses are structured hierarchically the way a man, a man would do it. And there just isn't fulfillment in being the best salesperson, you know, uh, uh, in the bank, in the in the bank, or wherever you're finding yourself. Um, you're made, uh, you know, for so many, so many wonderful purposes. One of them, though, that you begin to feel later in life is, oh man, I, I I'm I'm running out of time now. My clock's ticking. I want to have a baby. What 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 is the answer for women that are in their late thirties or even in their forties that that would like to have a child? So that you're, you're right, Bear. Um, the message out there is not is not being uh, relayed about the importance of of actually uh, not waiting until you're older, because we 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 do lose our fertility over time. However, as you get older, in essence, what it is 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 the, um, the health of the person begins to decline. Eventually, you, because we all we, we all will at some point speak for yourself. Yes. <laughs> so so the, the the job is to is to try to prevent that illness and to try to keep yourself as healthy as possible for as long as you possibly can. And it becomes more important to eat well, to exercise, to, um, you know, to have your regular checkups, to make sure they're not having any endocrine or metabolic issues going on, and to keep yourself as healthy as possible. Um, and, and so that would be my recommendation, is that if, if somebody is, has waited un until they were older, say mid-30s or, or later, um, that they that they work on making sure that they are as healthy as they possibly can. And then if they come to you, uh, the Billings ovulation method can help them to to uh, 
to time that. But also, it, can they reach out to you to find a doctor in their area if they are having some medical issues so that they can get healthy so that uh, they can attempt to have a child? Yes, uh, absolutely. So I'm a provider on My Catholic Doctor. It's, it's, it's a virtual hospital in essence. Mm -hmm. And so I myself, are not, I'm not a licensed health professional. So I work together with a team member who is a licensed health professional. So when somebody comes to me, um, they'll tell me their, their story, they'll give me some information, I will um, uh, offer to teach them the Billings ovulation method or work with them in another natural family planning method that they may have already learned. Um, and then if we identify that there are some, perhaps some, some health issues, it's not just a timing. It's not just a thing about timing, which by the way, happens quite frequently that yeah. it is just a timing thing. But then at that point, if it's not just a timing thing is to enlist or refer them to somebody that, that will, that will, that also believes in the restorative approach, right? Because if you just say, go see a fertility doctor, 90% of them are going to tell you just to have IVF. And in fact, for men... In vitro. Yeah. It, right. Test uh, in baby. vitro fertilization. Yeah. For, for men, that's the reason why um, the, uh, the diagnosis and treatment of infertility in men has, has been so, uh, so delayed is because of the IVF industry. They just say, well, why, why do we need to know? All we have to do is have you go through in vitro fertilization and you'll conceive, so don't worry about it. Do you have solutions for men too? And you know, because often the man is even older than the woman, and, and and if they have, do you have a way of identifying medical issues that they that can be corrected? Yeah. So, so the 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 semen analysis is still a very vital part of evaluating a man. It's not absolute, but it is a very powerful tool. But it's very important that it that that test be done in a morally licit way. Right. And there is a way to do that. So I, I, huh. I help people with that process. Um, I'll also look at their results if they've had them or after they've had them. I, because I used to do those procedures, I'm very keen at identifying things there. Um, and if, if there are uh, issues there, then, then the same way as with the woman is look, look at the underlying health issues for why that may be occurring. It could oh. be their profession. It right. could be what they do for a living that that uh, doesn't allow for proper temperature well, regulation. Or yeah, and and stress. You know, so stress, if a couple absolutely. wants to work with you, and and what's your website again? So, um, Boma dash. Yeah, Boma B O M A dash USA dot org. Um, we we train teachers. Our organization trains teachers and health professionals on the Billings ovulation method. But also, I would, I would encourage them to reach out to my Catholic doctor, one all one word, my Catholic doctor, and there is where they'll provide you'll you'll find the doctors and the health providers who can also help in that my, area. Mycatholicdoctor.com. How much of this yes. now is done uh, via you know Zoom and things like that, in case people can't get to you, especially a, yes, you a know, large a professional who's working or not professional, someone who's working. Uh, can a lot of that done? They can go and get the, their lab work done or whatever. And yeah. yeah yes, I would say uh, since COVID, <laughs> perhaps one of the only things that was maybe good that came from that is, is the fact that now there are many resources for being able to do telehealth. So there's a lot of things you can do virtually. And then the doctor can give you the requisitions or the orders to go to a laboratory to have certain tests done, as well as uh, say ultrasound or um, or other other procedures, um, and um, and then they can they can manage all that. They can so manage I, all that data virtually. Let's pray right now for a moment. Yeah. Oh Lord, we ask. Uh, we know there are people listening right now. Maybe they're 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 parents who have a child that's struggling with this too. Not just the person themselves or a friend. We pray that you would uh, give them hope and let them know that it's okay to desire to have a child and that there's, uh, there's help available. And just pray for those who are wanting to have a child and conceive. We pray right now for that miracle of life for them and for their physical well-being. In Jesus' name we pray. So the, to me, this is just, just 
such a such a great work and uh, your website is boma boma-usa.org and mycatholicdoctor.com uh, where they can go and find a, an expert but I, I kind of like yes. send them to your website boma-usa.org so they can find you and or, you can help or they direct can also them. find me they can find me on my catholic doctor i'm listed and, in every okay state. so okay so tell us how yeah. to spell your last name if you remember uh, tell them the, t- tell them the, t-u-r-c-z-y-n-s-k-i Do you tell the truth do people just call you dr t I, I usually have people just call me Craig. <laughs> just call me Craig. Yes. <laughs> so there, so there is hope for you, and we thank you for 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 being with us today uh, on the Bear Wasnick Adventure, Doctor Craig Terzinski with BOMA USA dot org. Uh, experts on helping you get healthy, both men and women, to have a child, and also to have the. Uh, the tools available to you so you can so that it can help you to become pregnant and also if it isn't the right time and you want to uh to plan your family a little bit uh you, you know using the ovulation method while still remaining open to life uh you can find information there too we want to let everybody know remember our tv show long ride home with bear Wozniak, our motorcycle tv show is a great evangelistic tool and it's up on prime video if you're a member of deepadventure.com if you join uh, our school of Ma- our bear school of manliness or the mama bears you get access to all of them to the youtube video version of it but if you want to watch on on youtube you, uh, i mean not on youtube on prime video you can go there it's really kind of a slick thing to do when your brother-in-law comes in and you just happen to have our show on and he gets interested in the motorcycles and all of a sudden he realizes we're talking about jesus so check out our long ride home show and if you want to subscribe to our newsletter every uh, week you'll get an email uh, with that week's uh, radio show, uh, only you'll have the video YouTube version. Thank you, Dr. Craig Trzinski from boma-usa.org, expert on, um, on uh, fertility. And we say here until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak DeepAdventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our DeepAdventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift.